What's going on dreamers? My name is Acer and in this video I'm going to show you how to save your character's weapon between scenes. So why would you want to do this? I mean, uh, maybe maybe you have some sort of RPG. It doesn't have it doesn't have to be an RPG. Just any game where your character can change the weapon they have. And um, it doesn't even have to be a weapon. It could be armor. It could be an ability. It doesn't matter. Um, so let's say the the weapon changes, and then you want the game split into different scenes. You need to remember what weapon the character has and then when you change scenes the character should still have that weapon so um for an ex uh, here's an example that i that i put together we have a red world and a blue world um we have two weapons on the ground so if we equip this weapon now we have a sword and if we change scenes we still have the sword equipped uh, we can pick up this one change scenes still have it equipped uh, we can unequip it, change scenes, and now we have nothing equipped. So as you can see, the weapon the character has um, is st is saved, you, uh, even when you change scenes. You see, you have the same weapon between scenes, and I'm going to show you how to do. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Uh, but yeah, I can't stress this enough. This technique can be used for other things. It does not have to be just for weapons. All right, guys, so we're in the demo I created. We are in Red World. It does not matter which scene we're in. Um, and I'm going to show you really quickly how it works, but mainly I'm going to add a weapon to this system. So I'm going to add another weapon, and that'll give you a good idea of like how to actually implement it. Um, let's look at the weapons first. So on the weapon, it's literally just some logic to pick it up. Um, we have an interaction point tag, and if this tag is lit up, it turns on this exclusive gate, and it in turn will turn on this chip, and in this chip, we sense if you press the interact button. Uh, where is that? It's probably here. So here's the interact button. It's just square. See? Interact. Square. So when you press the square button, it will set the current weapon variable, and it will destroy the weapon on the ground. And it also uh, displays this equip thing. So that's the uh, that's the logic in the weapon. It's really really straightforward. Uh, and now let's go into the interesting thing, which is the character. So we have <clears throat> we have the attack, uh, and I actually have a separate tutorial on this. So if you want to know how I put together the the weapon swing attack, definitely check that out. Um, but that's not what this tutorial is for, right? The poses chip. So th uh, that's for the attack. Here, th this is this is what we're this is what we're interested in. We already went over the interactions. Uh, this, the weapon manager. So the idea is that each weapon is represented by a number, and that so called current weapon. If we equip this weapon, we set the current weapon number to two. Uh, if we equip this weapon, we set it to one. See, to one. If the current weapon is one, uh, then the this selector's index is set to one, which is B. Zero is A, B is one, C is two, etc. Um, so one would be B, which would turn on the simple sword chip. And all this is, is a keyframe, which turns on the weapon, okay? So every, this is this is another important part. Every single weapon is already in the character's hand, but it's powered off. And this keyframe will turn on only the simple sword weapon. This keyframe turns on the, the EOS weapon, the, the, the weapon number two. And if it's zero, that means you have no weapon equipped. There's just nothing, so they both turn off. Um, I, it's literally just taking a number and powering on which one corresponds to that number. Um, the the other thing is the animation. So you can have separate, you can have different attacks, and it's the same thing. Look at this. We have current weapon, and we're putting it into a selector. Each selector's output respond uh, corresponds to that to the, the corresponding weapon, right? So simple sword is one. EOS attack is two. And currently they're the same attack, but I did change the sound just to prove that it's actually working. So you have that one. 
and then you have that one. So we are actually getting two different animations. Um, and that's it. That's actually the entire system. So the, the idea is you're storing the weapon, you're storing the current weapon as a number in a persist in dream variable. And depending on what that number is, is the current weapon that is displayed. Every weapon is already in your hand. Um, so that's how it works. Let me show you how to actually set it up. Let me let me add another weapon to it. So one more really important note uh, before we actually start. The character. For this to work, the character needs to be the same in every single scene. So because of that, we're saving the character as its own object. So I'm gonna click the character and edit the source. If you remix this, I don't think you can do that. If you can, awesome. If you can't, uh, all you have to do is take the character and save it as its own object. So, so you're editing all of, like, so you're editing the character in every scene at the same time. You, you'll still have to update it, but that's, that's the idea. Um, I will make the character public though, so I'm, you might be able to edit the source. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Anyway, here's the character. You'll notice how the swords are on the ground in the character. You don't have to do that at all. You can put the swords on the ground wherever you want, in any scene you want. They don't have to be on the ground in every single scene. I just did that because I wanted to. In fact, in Blue World, I'll change the swords around than it compared to Red World, just, just so it's more obvious. Anyway, we're gonna add another weapon. So the first step is to find a weapon. So let's just let's try to find a sword. Now, it doesn't have to be a sword, but... Yeah, let, let's be creative. Let's let's find a weapon. Hmm. Sure. Okay. Ruby's scythe. Perfect. Um. All right. So we found a weapon. We're gonna we're gonna scale it down. And we we do want it on the ground. We can always move it around. What is in this microchip? Oh, the animation. Oh, he turns into a gun. That's cool. We don't need that, though. What about this one? Weapon a gun. Okay, that's actually really cool. <laughs> that is awesome. We don't need it, but it's very, very cool. They did a, they did a great job with this. Okay, so we have the weapon. Um, let's just make sure really quick that it's not physical. We really don't want it to be collidable um, at all. There's, there's, no, there's no point for any of this stuff to be collidable. There's probably still collidable stuff in there. It doesn't matter though. But uh, for this example, it doesn't matter. But for, for your game, I would highly recommend making the weapons non-collidable. Okay, um, so we to pick up this weapon, we, we need this chip. So let's just grab this chip, put it in here. Um, let's make sure the tag is in a good place. That's fine. And this is going to be weapon number three. So remember, this was weapon one. This was weapon two. This, the ruby scythe, the scythe is going to be weapon number three. Okay. So when you pick this up, the current weapon gets set to weapon number three. So that's easy. Now we need to go into the character. Uh, let's, yeah, let's look at the weapon manager first. So... Let's get, let's just copy and paste this chip. We can, we can get rid of the keyframe. We'll just put a fresh one down. So if the current weapon is three, so output D, remember A is zero, B is one, C is two, D is three. Uh, what happens? We want the scythe in the character's hand to be powered on. So let's copy and paste it. And we're gonna we're gonna group we're gonna scope it into the character's hand. So I'm gonna grab it. I'm going to hover over the hand, and I'm just going to scope in once and twice. I believe this is. Ooh, I might. I don't think I went far enough. I did not go far enough. Okay, that's okay. So um, I think I need to scope it in one more time. There we go. So now if we scope back out and grab the hand, it moves right with the hand, which is exactly what we want. Um, I have this keyframe set up to where when I press it, the, the weapons go away. 
but it gets immediately destroyed. So when you play, they snap right back. I do this so I can, so it's not as cluttered. Um, so let's scope in and let's just align it. I don't know why, the, oh, did I move the hand? I think I moved the hand, let's undo. There, I, I accidentally moved the hand, so. Oh, okay, we did, it's good though, it's good. Um, okay, so let's, let's scope in. And let's align it to the hand. Uh, I don't know where you're supposed to be holding this. <laughs> let's just hold it there. This is probably wrong, but it's fine. Yeah, that's, that's probably fine. Okay, perfect. Right? You're not supposed to hold it there, are you? It's fine, it's fine. How about, actually, how about like that? None of this matters though. Okay, so we've got it equipped, or we've got it where, sorry, we, we've got it where we want it in the hand. Now let's scope back in and power it off. Okay, it's powered off. Oh, and one more thing, sorry, this is this is my bad. Um, this chip, you, you do not need the pickup logic chip. Do, do not have that. That's really important. Uh, since I copy and pasted it, the, the chip was there. So we do not want that chip. But um, so it's it's in the hand, right? It's it's uh, it's in the hand. It should be powered off. It's powered off. Now, when this okay, we need to place a keyframe in this chip. When this keyframe turns on, we want it to power on this scythe, like that. Um, we want this to be on like that. That's that's important. Keyframes default to off, so you actually have to manually turn it on. And let's name this Scythe. All right, and finally, uh, the attack animation. I am just, because I'm not gonna like make a new animation just for this tutorial, I am just going to do this. It's really simple. If you wanna reuse animations, just wire the wire D into one of the existing ones. So I'm just gonna do this one, EOS attack. So EOS attack animation is for both the scythe and the EOS sword. Um, and that's it guys, the, the new weapon's added. So if we save this, actually uh, we can test it in here. So let's just test it. So we're gonna hover, we're gonna walk over the scythe. We're gonna equip. Okay, so. <laughs> something went wrong let's let's figure out what all right uh that was a very very simple mistake um the max value of this variable was set to two i'm gonna set it to 10 just so that never happens again obviously the, the value needed to be three but the max was two so when it tried to set to three it got set to two so let's try it now okay uh <laughs> <laughs> this is not the best demo area. There we go. So as you can see, it's working. You get the animation. You can change the animation with this system. It's completely fine. But yeah, it's that easy to add a new weapon. So let's save this. And now we just have to update both of the scenes. And you will have to update every single scene this character is in. All right, so we're updating it in Red World. You can see it's updated because the scythe is actually there. So let's save it. All right, and we're updating it in Blue World. So let's go to Blue World. It updates and we save. All right, and now we just have to update the dream. Fantastic, let's try it out. Uh, so now we have three different weapon choices. We can grab this one. I'm gonna unequip it. We can grab this one, or we can grab this one. And if we walk through the scene, we still have it equipped. Uh, now there's one more thing. Maybe you don't want the weapons on the ground in every single scene like this, or maybe you want it to look different. I don't know. In each individual scene, guys, you can you can change it up. So like you can you can delete them if you want. You can just completely get rid of them. Um, so
So now in Blue World, there are no weapons. But in Red World, there are. It's a different... So let's say if you, you pick it up, you never want it to appear there again. That's a whole different thing. Um, that is... That's... You're going to be using variables. Basically, you have to remember with a variable if you had picked it up. If you did pick it up, destroy it. If you hadn't picked it up yet, don't destroy it. So... Uh, but anyway, that is not, that is outside the scope of this tutorial. Um, so this is how you, this is how you save weapons, guys. Um, between scenes. I, I really hope this helped. If you have any other tutorial suggestions, and this was suggested by a viewer, by the way, um, let me know and I'll probably do it. If you need further dreams help, I stream dreams on Twitch every, every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, and I also have an awesome Discord community that you should definitely check out. Um, but anyway, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped out. Uh, let me know if it did. And I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll see you guys later. I just wanna be with you.